Academy has been around for 15 years. Uh, we are here to honor the great talent in this in this industry, and we have some of the great talent here today. We're going to go through some really uh, interesting questions uh, with Cliff and Mike. Uh, but I want to roll a short video, introduce you to the 15th Annual Interactive Achievements Awards that was held in Las Vegas this past February. And it's going to be amazing. I am in awe of all of you, all the artists in this audience. Interactive Achievements Awards, it's great. This is my favorite award show. It gives us a real true chance to celebrate each other's work. And there's no other place actually you can do that. Tonight we honor Ed Law. Tim Sweeney. It's just great to get nominated for your work, especially when the competition is so incredibly high. It's a good year, great games. These games are so damn good that it's just, it's just kind of blowing my mind. So here are this year's awesome fucking nominees. <laughs> So this first one is going to go to Cliff, and this is, uh, we're starting with past, we're going to go to present and future, unless you guys want to mix it up, and uh, this came from someone in the community, Harpuni Coley 17 I don't know if you're here, but uh, how did Epic Games get its name? Oh, that's, oh, we're on, good. Um, hello, <laughs> now all of your ears are bleeding. So, uh, Epic was founded, of course, by uh, the legendary Tim Sweeney, who uh, basically, as the classic American dream goes, founded it in his mother's basement, I swear to God. And to this day, we actually have a conference room next to Tim's office that's called Tim's Basement. And uh, I get asked a lot of times, you know, how do you get in the industry and how do you make games? And the answer is, well, start making games if you wanted to be a chef and start burning some food really quick. And so Tim wanted to have a name that sounded really big and important and significant, and so it was originally actually called Epic Mega Games, which I thought was really hilarious, and it really sounded, I was like, you're calling it like Super Nifty Games or something like that. <laughs> and then Mega 64 sued the crap out of us. Yeah, yeah. we settled. Yeah, and then Epic Records, and it was just ugly. And then Supergiant came along and proved that you could have a name like that and pull it off. And so anyway, we dropped the Mega God about 10 years ago, and ever since then it's just pretty much been Epic Okay, now Mike gets a question here. And, and aside from the obvious success of Gears, what would you say is the work that you're most proud of this far? This thus far? Well, well this is from In Flames. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I'm a programmer before I joined Epic, and so it's got to be the engine. I mean, it's so cool to see people walking in with a Borderlands shirt and know that we pretty much made that game. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> there, there are some folks there in Texas. Thank you. 
buying us dinner tonight. Yeah, it's like, it's like we might be buying Randy dinner tonight after that. But, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm playing Mass Effect 3 at home when I'm not traveling at shows like this. And, you know, we, we our cover system's in there, and they took some, some cues from Horde, and they took a lot of our, and they make it look awesome. So it's really cool to influence the industry in such a big way. It's Batman, mean, right? Yeah, Batman. I mean, there's, there's, I mean, there's literally hundreds of games on our tech, and that's really exciting as a developer to know that we built a feature in the engine that we ended up not using in any game. Um, that cool spline stuff that now is in Bioshock Infinite, and that's the traveling pathways. So even though we built a feature and then cut it from our own games, it still got used by somebody. The developer who made that at Epic is still proud of that and got to see it in a game. I just want to say that it was. I, that confirms it was a good idea. By the way. And then they used it. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, no idea what you're talking about. And your George Washington robot idea was terrible. <laughs> so, I love, that's what I love about Ken Irrational. Like he pitches a George Washington robot and like trans-dimensional. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And, and everyone's like, yeah, I pitched that at work. They'd be like, you're an idiot. <laughs> so you did make the cut. Half the games are up there on the engine. So if, if it benefits our licensees, then it's a win-win. Yeah. Uh, so Cliff, this for Tyler one. After all the work in the FPS genre with the arcade Unreal Tournament, how did the concept of a gritty, tough, very character-driven tactical third-person shooter that is Gears today come about? Well, I think Gears started off tactical and really wound up not being tactical, which, I mean, I'm okay with. Uh, when I like to work on games that are kind of like different from the last ones we worked on. I mean, primarily uh, we're working on Fortnite right now, which uh, I can't really talk much about, but if you've seen the initial trailer that came out at Spike, it looks quite a bit different from Gears. And so we've been doing Unreal and Unreal Tournament and Unreal Championship, and my brother used to joke, what's next, Unreal the fucking musical? <laughs> so at that point, we're like, okay, let's do a new thing, let's start fresh, and having seen Band of Brothers and loving Resident Evil, it all just kind of coagulated into this nice, delicious soup that was Gears 1. So um, I'm totally going to cheat and use the fact that I have this massive group of people. So if you've played Gears, put your hand up. I assume it's almost everybody, right? Okay, good. If you, if you haven't played Gears, but you're here anyway, good for you. You're going to learn a lot today. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and then second, if you've seen the Fortnite trailer, put your hands up. Okay, so that's good. And now, if you saw the Fortnite trailer, you're a Gears gamer, but you're kind of curious about Fortnite, even though it's not what we normally do and there's no chainsaws in it that we've shown you yet. Are you interested? Is this cool or is it not your thing? So, so it's kind of a mix. I mean, it's not a dead on. There's some people who are really excited about it. Whoever cheered, give him a t-shirt. Um, <laughs> all of them. Um, so we're kind of, we know it's a little bit of a departure for us. Um, well, we need to change ch 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 Fortnite. I just, I, I always, we keep going back to some of the cool quotes from Pixar and they say if we're not a little nervous, we're not doing our jobs. And it's like, I've joked in the past that, you know, if we were to hand off gears to another studio and they came back with, bigger buffer guys and double chainsaws and more blood and all that, people would just roll their eyes. And so even for the future of Gears and the future of the studio, I mean, if you look at the announcement of Infinity Blade Dungeons, it's time to try some new stuff. Mm -hmm. Sure. So did uh, Unreal Tournament have any, any impact on Gears? I mean, yeah. least, originally the first version of Gears was very much uh, Quake and uh, enemy territory type of game, right? It was, uh, you had two sides that had unique vehicles and mechs and giant landscapes and objectives and things like that. And uh, we decided to shift it to third person when we got the uh, first version of Unreal Engine 3 up and going. Uh, and uh, I mean, it had an influence in regards to our shooting heritage, but we wanted it to be a little bit more grounded. No uh, translocators and no castles in the sky, so to speak. I think probably the most valuable thing we learned from Unreal Tournament as a studio was when the first one was finishing up, we were done, ready to go, and then we had a dispute with the publisher and didn't ship it. I wasn't even there at the time, but I hear the stories. So we spent six more minutes, six more minutes, six, fast moments, six like. more months <laughs> polishing the game and all the cool stuff you think of in Unreal Tournament all came in that last six months, all the fun polish. And so I think that influences us as a studio more than anything is, hey, if you take some more time, you're going to make a better game and people are going to like it more and you're going to be more successful and all kind of goes together. For it's sure, we special time. sauce, right? It's, it's, I call it the chicken factor from Gears 3. The fact that Steve and Superville had the time to code up chickens and not only code them, but make them so that you could grenade tag them, then they'd run off and attack somebody. Like, that's what takes you from like a 90 to like a 92, 93 average rating, and that's, that's the special sauce. Right? The chicken, three points. It's, it's, the, chicken. it's, it's the chicken bra, really. <laughs> the chicken, chicken gun. So any other characters you want to develop more? More chickens, more... I, mean, I just, I mean, the, as you grow as a studio, we get a better handle on what it takes to make a game. You have producers who know what's going on, you have, 
you know, all these tools to make a better game, but sometimes it's that little sneaking in in the back channel with somebody who spent a couple extra hours burning the midnight oil to sneak in that extra feature that winds up bringing you kind of to the next level, I guess. Yeah, I hate that as a producer. <laughs> Uh, characters we want to develop more? Oh golly, uh, all of them. And you never get enough time to talk about a character in a shooter. The Unreal Tournament universe, I mean, it's a flash of a quick cinematic and then you're off killing people again. There's not a lot of time to develop personality other than sort of big crazy archetype personalities. You always wish you could tell more of those stories. I, I love how we've been able to explore gears between the comics and the novels and everything. Really find out who those people are and then bring those stories back into the game. Can I tease something right now? Uh, sure, yeah, that's just me. Don't tease me. Tickling? There's a... Uh, I just tickled my boss. <laughs> there's a... Uh, like, what advice did you get out of that? Uh, chickens and tickle your superiors, I guess. Um, there may be news someday at some point of more new information on the character in Gears 3 who didn't have as much story as the rest of the other characters. That was a cooler way of saying it. The best character? Is that what you're saying? Well, it's arbitrary. Some people like a certain character, some like another. Alright, well, I'm not going to say it's the best character. Alright, you're up. Okay. Uh, question, you guys are doing a lot of stuff now. Uh, so mobile, smaller platform. Yeah, we won an award actually, Mark. Yes, you did. <laughs> hey, I, I showed nine of his games with our engine up there. Yeah, I think maybe we should roll the trailer for Fortnite. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what's the decision making process there? What do you want to guys, you guys want to get done? Uh, well, um, that's a really good question. We. It's different every single time. Uh, you know, after Shadow Complex, we were trying to decide what to do next with the chair guys, and we were looking at the engine and how we could take that to the mobile space and saw an opportunity to try something new. That really came out of uh, you know, experimentation for the tech. That's kind of a neat thing about Epic is sometimes we do things that are good for the technology. We looked at Infinity Blade as, let's at least show people how cool our tech looks on an iPhone. And if the game is good and makes you know a dollar or two, that's great too. But this is really more about exploration for us as a technology studio. And it turned out to be Game of the Year and a really awesome game because that's all Chair does apparently is they have four games involved in Game of the Year. So uh, it seemed like a pretty good bet. Uh, but uh, I remember I think it's like that. Sitting in your office and we were like, okay, you know, we're looking at mobile. I hear it's going to be big. Haha. -ha. And then uh, Donald showed us that little video prototype soldier, uh, kind of, uh, not soldiers, the uh, knights, kind of, in that kind of punch-out pose, and we were like, yes, do it. Yeah, no, that was a very fast green light. That was absolutely cool, but it actually started as a connect idea of slicing in the air and stuff like that, but it turned out that wasn't nearly as cool as swiping in the air. I think it's different every time, you know, we've done full IP searches where we're like, all right, everybody in the studio, give us your great ideas and we'll try to narrow it down and think about what platforms we want to be on. For example, we might be working, I think I mentioned, on a PC-only title, which apparently some of our long time fans yeah. are very happy about. Yeah. Follow back to a second, because like there's a certain every time an article comes up about us, there's always the time until the people who love the PC chime in and go, "Epic, I hate you. You abandon the PC." Let us state that again. We are working on a PC game. So. <laughs> We've actually shipped a couple PC games, but a PC-focused game is a lot different uh, to PC users. They don't like ports very much at all. No, no they hate you. They don't like ports six months later. Too. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> it's never happened. Shut up, Cliff. That's the past. Let's go to a next question. <laughs> okay, and from Judy from your community, and uh, with Gears, what made Epic Games choose the route of a third-person shooter instead of a typical first-person shooter? I think when, uh, as I alluded to earlier, when we saw how the characters were looking, and then I think when the cover system kind of started coming online, uh, Lee Perry showed me that game, Kill Switch, which I love games that come along and try something new and then don't do well. We're like, oh, we can identify that what didn't work with that game, and we can do it right. Thanks for the prototyping, dude. And, uh, and looking at Resident Evil, looking at the over-the-shoulder view, it really made a lot of sense. Um, I'm not a huge fan, personally, of first-person cover. I think it kind of looks like this. <laughs> and I have yet to see anybody solve it. I think uh, third person right now makes a lot of sense for cover-based stuff, but you never know in the future. I mean, I do kind of miss looking down the barrel. Can you show us first-person evasion rules? <laughs> I don't want to pull something. <laughs> and uh, this could be an influence from anyone out here, I think, but this question I thought was interesting. Are, are the characters in your games influenced by anyone in real life? Family, friends, bosses. Oh, jeez. Um, 
Yeah, Dom was actually very much influenced by an artist who used to work at Epic. He was this uh, hilarious little Mexican dude named Danny Rodriguez. And uh, he used to a good party. Yeah, he actually he actually bought this like bandolier of shot glasses and like brought it to a party one time. And he was like this little like honey badger of drinking. He just, he just doesn't give a shit. And he's a character, uh, he's one of the main ones, and I think if you look at uh, Coltrane and uh, the whole uh, Rasa, uh, Lester Speed thing, that just pretty much designed itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jester is my sister, I never told her that, but she's my sister. Uh, let's see, who else? Because I, I wrote on Tournament 3, I guess, most of the characters there. So, uh, clearly I was Marcus, uh, it's pretty... <laughs> <laughs> And I mean, there's I mean, there's whole daddy things going on in Gears we've alluded to between Lee and Rod and I, and losing our, our parents and our dad at an early age, and for some of the others, both parents. And uh, we suddenly got together in one room and we were like, why is this like a quest for your father? Oh, that's right, we're all a little messed up in the head, that makes sense. <laughs> this, this thing they don't tell you is every game developer is a little bit fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's like the, the land of misfit toys, right? It's a matter of focusing that cool craziness into cool stuff. Yeah, very much delivering that yourself, I think, you know, finding something inside, as, as a writer, finding something inside of me that I'm struggling with and writing about it can be really valuable. Um, uh, for the two of you here who read the Gears comics, uh, that will struggle with whether or not to have... Uh, oh, a couple of people did, yeah? Did I mention I wrote some of those? Yeah, anyway. Um, so the one I wrote uh, about uh, the Baron women and, and dealing with that is me trying to struggle with the idea of should I have kids? It's a really crazy thing to do, having children, and that whole story of some of the characters wanting to have children, some of them saying I would never do that in a world torn like this one is, uh, that struggle is my own struggle on paper. I think that's often the most successful thing. Alright, I'm going to call you out on this one right here, because you know what this is? This is the start of idiocracy. Because for those of you who've seen that movie, yeah. Yeah. Here we are. Here we are. Here we have Mike and Julie, two uh, lovely, intelligent, brilliant people who should be having lots of kids, as opposed to the dumb people who are like, it's all about the family! It's only better to have a The same the more degrees you have, the less likely you are to have kids. So that's, you know, that's my problem. Yeah, because you're aware of how messed up the world can be. <laughs> We're gonna, next question. <laughs> Hey, there's a lot of questions here from your, Fortnite's a different style game, and you touched on it earlier, but, but Mike, from your perspective, uh, what's your goal with this? It's a, it's a new idea, it's fresh. Uh, well, thank you. That's kind of a compliment, not a question. Um, let's see. Uh, well, the goal, uh, part of it is to learn about a different kind of way of making games uh, and playing games and testing games. And we really know story-based shooters, I think, very well, how to make that sort of thrill ride of emotion, uh, the roller coaster of gears, that kind of thing. Uh, so for us, it's, it's a new art style, experimenting with something new, I think, for characters. She is so much more popular than I am, right? I mean, she's, she's dressed up. With, yeah, I'm sure it's, I can't compete. Anyway, uh, so, and it's part about, our guys have been making gears for a long time. I mean, the early experimentation was like 2002 or something like that, initial ideas. And this is something to kind of cleanse the palate and do something different. Uh, if any of like Dungeons is the same way. It's trying to do something new for our studio that's been making gears for a while and just kind of needs a break. So, and just uh, from the art style, when we're like, we did the all call for artists who want to work on Fortnite, it was like, boom, immediately, because it's, you know, they can work on some cool stylized kind of car that's in the world, as opposed to spending four weeks on this beautiful marble column that well, the gamers going to whiz right by. Or blow up. Yeah, that too. Uh, but I mean, from my end, I'm just really excited, because there's a certain amount of generations that are gamers that only know me personally from Gears. Uh, there's a lot of gamers that only know Mike as being the president of Epic and Produce Gears, but Mike worked on America's Army, on our championship, etc. And uh, the, the fact that we love the chainsaw, we love the characters, the armor, and everything, but you, you want to be known for a lot of different things as a creative, and to have to be working on this now is really, really fresh and fun, and a little bit scary. Yeah, and it's the first time I've gotten to really work directly with Chris, and like, here's one story stuff we yep. worked on a little bit, and then I've been pushing Excel sheets since then, so it's fun to get back and think about it a little bit, and yeah. piss everybody off. So it's not only are we working together, but also I'm working with Steve Polch, was one of the original Unreal Tournament guys, and so it's really this kind of like reunion. It's really good, actually. No well, American Pie like, thing, though. It's totally different. That's Aaron Reed. And 
that's it for us. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> so a lot of questions here about, uh, and I'm sure you get this everywhere you go, but but you, you, you talk about making a call for artists, and you get a lot of hands go up in the air, and, and there are a lot of questions here. I love games. I think I'm a smart person. How do I get into the business? What do you look for? A sense of fashion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, wearing the Halo Reach shirt, whoever that trick was, to the Gears panel, it's not going to get you done. <laughs> uh, well, a quick question. Uh, how many people here are thinking about getting into game development at some point? Turn so around, they, leave, don't do it. No, ha! <laughs> okay, so, so that's good. Um, it's 70 something percent of uh, undergraduate computer science students are planning to get into the games industry at this point, which is a little crazy. Obviously, they don't all end up doing that. It's a tough industry, the hours aren't so good. Um, but it's a heck of a lot of fun because you get to work with really creative artists who drive you crazy as a manager, and really uh, smart programmers who don't listen to you as a manager, and uh, let's see, level designers who uh, don't think about scope when you're the manager. Let's see. Maybe that's just my perspective, though, Clint. Lots of Zantac. Um, I did a talk, a micro talk at GDC this year, in which I had to basically kind of, uh, I did this whole thing like, if I went back in time and I was 17 again right now, like, what would I do? And it's like, now more than ever, when, when we were starting off, it was like CompuServe. We had like those modems that made those horrible not sounds like they're getting strangled. And we had to like make our own shareware games and figure out ways to get them to the top of the alphabetical list by putting exclamation marks and shit. And now, you have so many different devices from PC to iOS to Xbox Live Arcade to PSN. And like, there's so many different ways to do it. And you look at like the Bastion guys, you look at uh, so many developers out there. Notch, of course, is the, the darling, indie darling who's killing it these He's days. He's so dreamy. <laughs> he is. I love his hat. <laughs> and so just now for never, if you want to do it, just fucking do it. And if you have the talent and you work hard enough and you're a little bit lucky, it will happen for you. Yeah, I think uh, uh, it's all about practice, trying to be a game developer is the easiest way. I'm so jealous of folks who can download our tech and have like the latest, most powerful game engine in the world right there. You can just download Build for you, EK. Oh my god, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, uh, high schoolers can learn how to make games with the best games engines around. Whether it's ours or you use somebody else's, there's a ton that are available. And the folks who tell me, I always wanted to make games, but I really don't know how, or I never took a class, or whatever, geez, just, just go do it. Just you're going to make a lot of crappy games before you make a good one. I always love busting. We sure did. Oh, yeah. No, we have a sure. We have, and, and missteps along the way. And, and Rovio made, what, 51 games before Angry Birds, right? And, uh, you know, if you're in your 20s, uh, you know, when your friends are going out to the bar, uh, you should probably stay home and work. Trust me, it'll pay off. Yeah, that guy's been standing up. What's up? <laughs> Get up for this guy. buzzword here, uh, and a lot of the core gamers feel weirdly threatened by that, which I, I don't quite get. It's like, if you love playing twin stick shooters and you keep buying twin stick shooters, you will, people keep making twin stick shooters, for example. And at the end of the day, these are, this is just more people playing games who are more likely to maybe play a game like Gears or uh, Halo or any other title. And uh, I think you see a massive amount of diversification in the world, which is why you see us working on dungeons and games like Fortnite. And uh, I think it's going to honestly, you're going to see a bloodbath of a lot of medium-sized studios shutting down, but then uh, those developers going off and forming new teams to do different PC and iOS games and things like that. Yeah, I gotta be honest, um, I was pretty pissed off when Cliff started watching Games of Thrones because I've been reading those series forever and I thought it was cool. And then it turns out like my mom's watching Games of Thro Game of Thrones. I'm like, dude, that's my thing. What are you doing? I mean, it's pretty hardcore for your mom. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever put my mom in hardcore and sentence again, <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, speaking of my mom as a gamer, uh, last time she gamed was Atari 2600 in the late 70s, and then the Connect, and uh, we brought 
her generation back to gaming, and then Farmville and everybody brought them all back some more. I love that most people identify themselves as gamers now, which they didn't do for 20 years, 30 years there in the middle. And so making everyone a gamer was a great start. Now we just have to make everybody a Gears gamer. And we're working on it. Do you ever have to play uh, Words of Friends with like your parents? And like, the, you, you swear like they're trolling you to try and do dirty words. <laughs> Like, play that one. I can't, that's my mom. Like, don't, don't draw something with your mom. That's it. Cool. So, big influence in the community. Uh, again, on New Games, uh, we, we reach out to the community for, for input and ideas. How do you, how do you use that? Oh, jeez. Um, uh, it's a combination of the forums, of Facebook, Twitter, the usual feeds. And uh, well, uh, mostly everybody's been pretty cool lately, right? It's, it's really, the internet tends to breed a certain type of attitude sometimes. And once you kind of, you know, get the obvious trolls out of the way, it, there's been a lot of great love of the forums. And, and you know, go, I go into the community uh, manager's offices, and they actually will print out some of the great comments and put them on, like, this wall of awesomeness. So uh, rest assured, the voices are being heard. Yeah, we got rid of the wall of hate. That was not very popular <laughs> in the office. I, I mean, I think we listen a whole lot. It's tough because the people who talk to us most are the people who are the most hardcore and the most particular about things. It's very rare that our sort of general audience will be talking to us on our forums. So it's hard because we want to really be responsive to hardcore players who really know the game, but we also want to keep it fun for people who play casually. Um, yeah, screw them. It's going to be about the hardcore audience. Forget it. Forget I said that. This is my favorite story was this kid tweets me one time. He's like, screw you, I hate your guts, I wish you were never born, die, 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 and I'm like, jeez, and I click on his profile, it's like, Gears Lover 46, he's got the hats and the shirt and everything, I'm like, what do I do here? And I uh, was talking to a gaming executive that we know the other night at dinner, and he's like, you know, you gotta, you, obviously they care, they're tweeting you and they like the stuff, and you know, something has happened to upset them, so the goal is to flip them and, you know, make them a believer, and sometimes just letting them know that you're listening is half the battle. Thanks for telling me shit, you should have got a t-shirt gun, by the way. <laughs> cool, and Sid wants to know, with games getting bigger and, and looking better on consoles, just by sheer optimization and careful planning, what do you see for development cycles in the future? Do you think next-gen consoles will mean longer development for games? Uh, I mean, it's, it's been getting bigger and bigger, right? The budgets have been going up by a factor of you know, five to ten per generation. It's been nuts. Uh, and not that there is a next generation console or that I can talk about it at all, but if there were one, you might imagine that it would be a lot faster than the last ones, right? And therefore able to draw a lot more detail and then we would have to generate that detail. Um, early on in the Unreal Engine 3 life cycle, I used to give this presentation and say, it first took two days to make a character model, and then Unreal Engine 2 it took about a week, and now it takes about 10 or 11 weeks to make a character for Unreal Engine 3, and, and it's just gonna get tougher. Uh, just So budgets will go up, and that's part of why we invest so much in technology and tools. Uh, we're lucky to be a tools provider as well as a game studio, so we can kind of over-invest in tools more than we would do just for Cliff and the development team, uh, uh, because we know that a lot of other folks will benefit from it too. But yeah, it's going to be tough. I think that's what Cliff's talking about. It's going to be harder and harder for mid-sized studios and independents to, to do well in the console space. Uh, but hopefully they'll go to mobile, which is getting better and faster too, and it's a really exciting business. It's just, uh, you look at what Tim realized early on, I remember, I, I mean, I'm not a very good artist, I'm not a very good programmer, but... Or I, designer, really. Yeah, I, I just, I surround myself, Public speaker. I surround myself yeah. with other people and just feed off their success. <laughs> the, uh, the fact is, Tim knew how to make tools to empower creatives to, even if you weren't that technical, you'd still understand constructive solid geometry and, oh, add a cube, subtract a cube, and those kinds of things. And uh, I think if you look at the future, the key is to work smarter, not harder. How can we have tools that enable, uh, you know, an artist to rapidly prototype something and fail, fail, fail in order to find the fun? And I think that's uh, one of the keys to the engine's success story, right? So, I mean, you really consider that a key to success? I mean, obviously, Tim's brilliance, but the engine and the tools around all that good art. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the artists make the tools look good, and the tools make the artists able to make stuff look good. It's, it's a pair, and I think it's so hot that Cliff just said constructive solid geometry for those of you who are mathematicians in the room. You said, you said tool. <laughs> <laughs> There's not enough mathematicians in this room. All right, let's move on. So, okay, we're going to talk about hardcore tool, and this is getting out of control. A lot of people are interested in, in, in another Gears War game. Will there ever be another one? Never. <laughs> Quote me today. We're so tired of that crap. Are you kidding? Uh, 
we hate to say never, but we certainly ended the story. The trilogy is done. Those characters had, I think, a great moment, and that was a story that was meant to be planned that way, and, and it's finished. And I'm happy with how it ended. I'm, so, I'm really proud of the fact that we didn't do something. Needs another shirt. All right. I know. Put a shirt on a shirt. Shirtception. Um, <laughs> the fact that we didn't do the post-credit bullshit that everybody does these days in Year Three, like the credits rolled and that was it. There wasn't a sudden like hand coming up from the grave or something like that. It's like, but wait, something else is gonna happen. And we wanted to just wrap that story arc of those characters and kind of let it be. And God forbid, if there's another one of the features someday, we can explore the <laughs> unique areas because I think that's what we need to do in order to keep things interesting and fresh. We're looking for ideas too, so hit the farms. Oh, no, excuse me. Racer. What? Racer. Racer. Racing. Cards of War. Do you really want to see the blue shell in the Gears of War universe? <laughs> Guys, up for a question or two from the audience? These guys? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. How many questions did I do in the back who stood up for like half an hour? <laughs> yeah. I, I can hear you. That's ridiculous. <laughs> what I think is the best looking game on Xbox One, but it was sort of not a time when people were looking for that. Uh, it was pretty hardcore, mix of melee and shooting. Um, you know, you guys were talking about racing, and I was actually thinking about that, because there was a Nocti Cycle racing minigame in there. It was been a couple months on it. It was really badass flying those hover cycles, uh, but uh, we cut it for time. Uh, I would love, maybe maybe that would be a neat thing to come out of this panel at least, is go dig up a video of Unreal Championship 2 racing and put that up, because it was actually a whole lot of fun. It was just too much to do. It's actually, if you go by the Bastion booth with Supergiant, they actually have the first prototype playable on the show floor. Oh, right? yeah, that was a really, really cool. nice touch. That's cool. So, uh, I'd love to go back there. I mean, we don't have anything announced in the Unreal franchise at all right now. Um, we've been really busy with Gears, and now... You guys have heard about Fortnite and Infinity Blade Dungeons. We've got a couple other projects going on we haven't announced, and that's kind of got everybody spread pretty thin right now. We're not that big of a studio. In the big scheme of things, uh, I think there's about half as many people in all of Epic as there were on the COD team. Uh, you know, so we're pretty small, and it's tough to build a great AAA best shooter of 2011, I think it was called, uh, <laughs> game like Gears uh, with 70 guys, and then still be building the other products, plus the engine that all those other guys are using. So I really, really, really want to go back to the Unreal franchise. It's the reason I came to Epic. I'm a huge Unreal tournament fan. I, I joined Epic almost 10 years ago, and UT was what made it hard for me to finish my degree. Uh, I was playing it so much, so I was really excited to show up and crunch immediately on Unreal Tournament 2003 to get that out the door. Oh, and, Epic, right? Yeah, no, exactly. Uh, so I, I'd love to go back, I guess it is. Uh, I think uh, finding a way to incorporate the great things about Unreal 1 and even some of 2, uh, you know, that sense of exploration and discovery. What's fun about Unreal Tournament multiplayer, just get in quick and wash it up, and then a little bit of the melee elements of UC2 and some of the story elements. I'd love to see all that come together again. So, uh, yeah. Maybe hey, we're going to take some more, but we're going to need to do it at the mic. We're live streamed here, so I need this to go through audio. So, uh, all of your. Charge the mics! <laughs> Those mics. Perfect. Wow. So thank you. That was the most awesome question possible. <laughs> Should you pay 20 bucks for that? <laughs> I paid him two shirts, dude. <laughs> hey. Um, in today's 
kind of gaming, it's really, really difficult for a developer to successfully put out multiple sequels and have that progressively get better. Um, I think that I'm probably not the only one in this room that thinks Gears did that really well. Um, <laughs> what I want to know is what comes into play when you guys are sitting down to talk about, okay, we made this, and this one's going to be better, and this one's going to be better. And of course, the tagline has always been Cliff, bigger, better, more badass. But like, what's the more intricacies of it? What makes the next game still innovative, still better? Uh, well, it's a combination of, of uh, factors that we use. The first thing is uh, trust and gut instinct about what we want to do. And the problem as a creative is the second you ship a product as it goes out the doors. You all know, Mike, is that all you often see are the ugly things, the things that didn't work, the things you would have done better. Uh, and so we also have a process that we use that uh, Broad helps spearhead called New, Better, More. And this is what we use for Gears 2 and Gears 3 initially. What's new, what's better, and what are we going to have more of? And so we look at, you know, take the game apart, tear it apart, and try to not break what works, but try to add new elements. The catch-22 of shooters and sequels that I always like to point out is that gamers often claim they want the same exact game just with a prettier veneer on it. But then if you ship that, then everyone says you do game 0.5, right? Call of Duty! So you're dead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what is that you said, Call of Duty? That, was, that wasn't us saying that about Call of Duty. Well, you know, the thing about Call of Duty is it's a formula that they put out every year, but it still is pretty tasty, and so it works for me. Um, and it's a separate kind of game. But anyway, in regards to Gears, we just uh, trust our guts and kind of use it against the new better more process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good one. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for having me, guys. Uh, I was curious. Uh, I love board mode and I love versus. Have you guys ever thought of combining them, like a competitive board mode where two teams go at it to like get the highest score, and will we ever get the armor campus? I, I think if you were to do kind of the uh, Excel spreadsheet of game types and the ones we haven't gotten to yet, that could potentially be in the queue. But you're gonna have to wait and see. <laughs> Hey guys, uh, I just really want to know, is there any, any chance we'll get that Bulletstorm sequel? Is there any chance you'll get a Bulletstorm sequel? That's a good question. Uh, folks at, uh, I think Adrian is watching right now on the live stream going, yes, yes. Um, those guys are working on something else right now uh, that people can fly teams, but uh, they really love Bulletstorm. It had an awesome hardcore following. Uh, and uh, I don't know, it was a lot of fun. It was innovative in the shooter space, which is kind of hard to do, to just get a little crazy and have fun with it. Kind of reminded me of old school shooters in a good way, a good control scheme, and just a lot of goofy fun. I'd love to see something else in it. We don't have anything that's rolling right now, but, uh, uh, you know, hell, Jazz Jackrabbit is here dropping eggs on the floor, right? So, you never know, we can come back. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. I heard one in three of those are Jackrabbit.